integrity, honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. You're listening to America's Voice Now. My name is Michael Evans. I'll be your host this morning. You know, there have been a couple of revelations over the weekend that I think America is in dire need of awareness. The uh, issue surrounding where we are in terms of surveillance is coming to a head. And I want Americans to understand the exact depth to which this NSA sharing with the DEA and others is occurring. Because uh, there have been a couple of revelations about what's happening with the, uh, the sharing of the information that the NSA has been gathering. Now, we've been told all this time that this was directly related to terrorist activity and it was designed and geared to protect Americans. And yet, we now know that that is an absolute bald-faced lie. How do we know that? Well, for starters, in, uh, in Reuters this morning, there is an exclusive story which has been posted up on our Facebook page. You can find it at americasvoicenow.org, and you can also find it at facebook.com forward slash americasvoicenow. And basically, this is the story of how U.S., Uh, the U.S. is directing agents to cover up the fact that they are sharing NSA secured data with other agencies. Namely, and one of the worst, is the U.S. uh, DEA. Now, for the record, let's understand something here. The National Security Agency, or the National Surveillance Agency, as they should be known going forward, is a federal agency that is supposed to be utilizing this information for the protection of Americans. What we are now seeing is that they're sharing this information with the DEA, which is and and has a primary function that is completely different than the NSA. So let's analyze what that is. First of all, let's recognize something right off the bat that the National Security Agency, what they do is classified, what they, what they do is supposedly eavesdrop on foreign communications, right, to create databases of all of these terrorists that are out there. What they're really doing, by the way, is building dossiers on every American for very, very dangerous and nefarious purposes. I don't care what they tell you. I'm telling you what the reality is. Now, for the record, the the DEA has a completely different uh, focus and mission. The, the goal of the DEA and other law enforcement agencies that are being given this information is completely unrelated in any way, shape, or form to national security. This is for launching criminal investigations into people that are drug dealers, These are money launderers. These are bank fraud people. These are basically criminals. That's what their job and their role is. And what you're now seeing is that the NSA, irrespective of what the the national security policy is, is sharing this information that they're gathering on every American for this purpose. They're sharing it with law enforcement agencies Outside and, and by the way, if they're sharing it with the DEA, you can bet your money that they're sharing it with the FDA, with the USDA, with the ATF and others. Now, here's the problem. <clears throat> and by the way, there's an excellent article, follow up article also on our Facebook page. Again, you can get to that by going to Facebook.com forward slash America's Voice Now. 
Now, for the record, there's an excellent article out there on Reuter, by Reuters again, which is a follow up to the first article I posted, which grows uh, or shows a, a, an example of how these two agencies differ. And what you have to realize is that these the, the DEA is run by what they call the Special Operations Division or SOD. So the, the, the Special Operations Division forwards these tips that are gleaned from NSA intercepts and wiretaps by foreign governments. And we're going to get into that in the next half, how what, what's happening here is we're monitoring the English. The English are monitoring the Australians, and the, and, and the Australians and the English are monitoring the U.S. Then each government is transferring that information, whatever information they want, back to the host country. And that way, our NSA can say, well, we're not spying on Americans. No, you're not. The English are. And then they're giving you the information. So we're not fooled for a second by this. But to make matters worse, these the, the NSA is transferring this information and these and these uh, suspicious tips, if you will, that are gleaned from these en- intercepts and the wiretaps, and they are handing them off to federal agencies and local law enforcement. Now, this is unbelievable in its scope because what this tells us this is the real reason. Without it, with, without any qualification whatsoever. This is the real reason why the NSA is building and maintaining dossiers on Americans. It has nothing to do with international security, global security, domestic security, anti-terrorism actions or anything else. If they happen to catch a terrorist action, great. But we already know that the FBI admitted last week that with all of this surveillance, they couldn't catch the Boston bombers. So, The simple truth is, this is not designed and intended and meant to be a national database for the purposes of of defending against international terrorism. This is supposed to be a method by which they can catch domestic terrorists. And who qualifies as a domestic terrorist? Well, we already know that. Any person who's in the military, any person who has the word patriot in their in their uh, not for profit organization's name, any person who has nine twelve, any person who uses the term freedom, any person who gives away copies of the Constitution has a Ron Paul bumper sticker and a host of other examples that are basically Americans who seek freedom and justice in a country that is based upon that. What you have are NSA records being delivered to federal agencies, local law enforcement offices, and here's the here's the rub. This database, which is called DICE, D-I-C-E, this database is being hand, handed over, and it consists of over 1 billion records. Now, for the record, guys, let's understand that. There's only 315 million people in America. So what we have to recognize is that Obviously, not every American is subject to a, a risk or, or, or looked upon as a risk because there are babies and there are children under the age of, let's say, 16, 15 years old. And I don't know how many million there are there, but there's plenty of them. And then there are those who are members and partners in this project. And we know that with, with between federal and state um, uh employees, there are some 20 million Americans that work for government. By the way, it's a fifth of our entire of our entire workforce, for the record. One fifth of our entire workforce works for government. So if you take out those 20 million and let's say another 50 million, that leaves somewhere around a, around 70 or 100 million people that they're not monitoring because they don't care and they feel like they're on their side. What that tells you is that you've got somewhere around 200 million others who are subject to monitoring. And there's 20 or 5 million or so that we don't even know about because they're illegals, right? So there's all these illegals that live here we don't even know about. And, of course, how can we monitor them if we don't know about them? Ha ha. So what you have is about 200 million Americans and th- that are subject to dossier development, let's say. Now, if you take about the fact that there's one billion records being handed over, and this is primarily a compilation of the phone log data that's being gathered by the DEA 
whether they they're calling it through search warrants, subpoenas, whether they're doing it under FISA court, doesn't really matter. What does matter is that they're collecting all of this information and transmit transmitting it to uh, FBI. They're transmitting it to DEA, ATF, and it's for espionage and terrorism cases, allegedly. Now, if prosecutors intended to use, the, you know, for the, for the purposes of of the NSA, there this is um, this information is only supposed to be used for terrorism purposes, and under the the uh, Special Operations Department. These federal drug agents are trained to recreate, and this is this is the words right out of Reuters. The document reviewed by Reuters shows that federal drug agents are trained to, quote, recreate the investigative trail to conceal, to conceal the Special Operations Division's involvement. In other words, defense attorneys, former prosecutors, and judges say the practice prevents defendants from even knowing about the evidence that might be exculpatory in their case. They say it circumvents court procedures for weighing whether sensitive, classified, or FISA evidence must be disclosed to a defendant. Okay. So (laughs) you have to understand the implications of this. And I, who have already been prosecuted and persecuted as a result of a crime I didn't commit by a government that wanted me to shut my mouth, recognize where we're going with this. They are saying that they have the ability to hide their trail so that you as a defendant don't have the ability to, one, know that they have evidence that's been gathered against you, that this information is then classified and it does never have to be disclosed to you, which means when your prosec- when your uh, attorney, your defense attorney, asks the prosecutor for what's called discovery, and discovery is when the prosecutor has to say, "This is everything that we've got on your client," and your and your def- and your defense attorney says, "This is all of the evidence that we're going to bring forth to show he's innocent." Right? That's what's called discovery. Both parties give over the evidence that they have, so that. When, you know, when you go into court, everybody knows who the witnesses are going to be for and everybody knows who the witnesses are going to be against. And and your attorney has had access to any uh, uh, phone taps, monitoring, surveillance video, la, 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 whatever it is. What this is telling us and what Reuters is telling us is that they've they they have documents that are proving that the federal that these federal law enforcement agencies are hiding what they have, where they got it, and they're not disclosing it to the defense. Now, that takes that takes a whole nother tact when you're talking about criminal investigation. Because if you don't have information that you can use to, that, or that they're using against you to build a proper defense, you cannot possibly win. First of all, the rules in federal court, and where most of these will be held, and in state court for that matter, are so heavily biased towards the towards the prosecution that it's virtually impossible for anyone to actually ever have a fair trial. I don't care what the press tells you. I don't care what operate what delusions you're operating under. I'm telling you what the reality is. Almost no one in a criminal court today gets a fair trial. That's the simple truth, people. Now, <clears throat> when you're talking about withholding further evidence, especially exculpatory evidence, in other words, even if they have a phone call that shows that you were not involved in the crime, they don't have to give that information to your defense attorney, who would be able to then wave it in front of the crowd and say, Your Honor, here's a phone call and here's a transcript of it that proves that he wasn't there that day. That at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when that crime occurred, my client was in Wichita. He couldn't possibly have been there. And they're not required to turn it over. Are you starting to smell what's happening here? Okay. The next issue is the oversight of this. And here's, here's Reuters' take on it. NSA. Congressional leaders and intelligence committee members are briefed on the NSA's classified programs. Theoretically, they're supposed to be watching our backs. The Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, that's the FISA court, reviews and approves warrants for domestic eavesdropping. Okay. 
Now, I, I disagree with a lot of that, by the way, but that's at least their position. Now, under the Special Operations Department, which is the DEA and the ATF and the NSA, all of these other, excuse me, non-NSA um, organizations, the DEA officials who oversee the unit say the information that is sent to law enforcement authorities was obtained through subpoena, court order, and other legal means. A D, but not their court order, not their subpoena, not their legal means, the NSA's. You get it? A DEA spokesman said members of Congress, quote, have been briefed over the years about SOD programs and successes, Special Operations Department programs and successes. This includes a 2011 letter to the Senate describing this DICE database that they're using. But the spokesman said he didn't know whether lawmakers have been briefed on how the tips are being used in domestic criminal cases. So here's what we need to understand. What we now have is a, for all intents and purposes, Stasi-like, Nazi-like, KGB-like monitoring and surveillance system that is absolutely violating the Fourth Amendment rights of every American, the Fifth Amendment rights of every American, the First Amendment rights of every American. We already know they've been stomping all over the second for the last 65, 75 years, actually since 1934 when they passed the NFA Act. And then 1968, when they passed the Gun Control Act, because what does the Second Amendment say? Shall not be infringed. Shall not means may not, cannot, must not be infringed. And the word infringed means to impugn, slow down, to limit. So here's what we have. We have a program being run by the NSA, which theoretically has congressional approval, theoretically has uh, Supreme Court approval. So, uh, supposedly has Patriot Act, Act approvals, but they're transferring that information, unbeknownst to Congress or anyone else, to law enforcement agencies that are domestic and not involved in national security. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a treasonous act. The USA, and, and, here, and, and worse yet, it gets even worse. And this proves, by the way, that they know they're doing a treasonous act. Here's where I'm going to prove it to you. A secretive U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration unit is funneling information from intelligence intercepts, wiretaps, informants, and a massive database of telephone records to authorities across the nation to help them launch criminal investigations of Americans. Here's where it gets, here's where the rub comes. These cases are not national security, and after they transmit this information, they're covering their tracks. Now, that, ladies and gentlemen, tells us everything we need to know, because that shows what's called mens rea. Mens rea is a legal term that shows guilt, knowledge of guilt. In other words, when you are accused of a crime... One of the things that you have to have is the fact that you knew you were committing a crime and your intent is visible. Your intent was known to you that you knew that you were not, this wasn't something you did out of ignorance. You did it willfully violating the law. In other words, you know it's illegal to possess heroin, but you did it anyway. You knew it was illegal to rob that store, but you did it anyway. You knew that it was illegal to commit murder, but you did it anyway. Mens rea says you had the intent to commit the crime. And how do they prove that? Well, they prove that by the fact that you covered up the crime. And that's also, by the way, how they use, that's the, that's the methodology that they use to show that you, that you knew that you were committing a crime because you covered it up afterwards. So here's, the, here's what you need to understand. These people are covering up their crime because they know that it's a crime. In other words, they know that this is a criminal act on their behalf. They know it, and they're covering it up. These federal agents are trained to recreate the investigative trail to effectively cover up where the information originated, uh, aha, from the NSA, a practice that some experts say violates a defendant's constitutional right to a fair trial.
If defendants don't know how an investigation began, they cannot know to ask to review the potential sources of any exculpatory evidence that may exist. Information that might reveal entrapment, mistakes, or even biased witnesses. Nancy Gertner, who's a Harvard Law School professor who served as a federal judge from 1994 to 2011, came out and said this, I have never heard of anything like this at all. It is one thing to create special rules for national security, says Ms. Gertner. Ordinary crime is entirely different, and it sounds like they are phonying up investigations. That, ladies and gentlemen, is treason because they are violating the Constitution and their oath to uphold it, and they are targeting American citizens using unlawful information and how they obtained it, where they got it, no one knows. And you'll never know. And you can't fight against what you don't know. This is unbelievable, and it is absolutely beyond the pale as to what these people are doing. You see... What we have now is a gang of thugs and gangsters that run our nation. And what this tells us is that we are no longer a nation under the rule of law. We are now a nation under the rule of thugs. That we are underneath a government that operates not based on the concepts of fairness and justice, because Fairness and justice says you're not brought to court. In fact, there's a Supreme Court decision that says this. You're not brought to court for government to win. You're brought to court so that justice can prevail. And if you're not guilty, then the court should determine that. But when the information is stacked against you in a way in which you cannot disprove it, you are lost. We are in major trouble. The DEA and all of these other agencies that are underneath this SOD division, Special Operations Division, there are two dozen partner agencies that comprise the unit, including the FBI, the NSA, the CIA, Internal Revenue, and the Department of Homeland Security. Just think about that. This work is being done against ordinary American citizens, and we are being betrayed by our government for the purposes of specific targeting of those who they don't want, those who don't toe the line, those who break the rules. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to continue. But in the meantime, we're going to take a quick break and... and, um, Get a hold of uh, uh, some more information on this. I want to touch a couple of things this morning that are important for you to grab a hold of and understand. And so bear, just bear with me for a moment, and then we're going to talk about how the United States is doing this in concert with foreign nations, allowing them to monitor us, and then we're monitoring their people, and everyone's playing the game. We'll be right back. 